Welcome to Special Times with Pierre Fulosa and my guests today, Amy Kabillion and Jeff Kielsen from Self-Advocacy Self from Vinfin. Thanks for having us on the show today. You're welcome. It's exciting to be here. What is your, tell us your, back, your backgrounds in working with adults with disabilities. Sure, I can go first. Um, my background is I've worked in my current job for the last 20 years. I just hit the 20 year milestone. Um, so that's exciting. And I've worked in um, homes and day programs and in administrative offices. So I've done a variety of things. Before that, I worked in a home for a different agency while I went to college. It was my college job. I worked three to 11s went to school during the day and I fell in love with that job and I worked there for a while. So it ended up becoming my major in college and then my career path. Terrific. And hi, so I actually started, um, Peter, it's hard to get the words out in 1974 um, for the Department of Mental Health. And at that time, the not only Massachusetts, but states around the country were beginning to develop community services for people with disabilities. Prior to then, the only options for people were either living in an institution or getting no services at all. So it was really an exciting time. And, um, you know, through, you know, through the years, I worked for the Department of Mental Health and Department of Developmental Services. And did a lot of work um, before working with the group at VINFIN, a lot of work around uh, self-advocacy in, in various states around the country. And I also work with a, for an agency called Advocates, which is similar to, um, to VINFIN. And um, how did you become involved in self-advocacy and leading the group at VINFIN? So should I go first, Amy? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so actually prior to starting at Vin, you know, working at Vinfin, I, as I said, I did a lot of work on, on supporting um, self-advocates and supporting people with disabilities to become self-advocates. So one thing I was involved in was actually in the state of Kentucky where um, I facilitated really the development of a of a brand new statewide self advocacy group called Kentucky Self Advocates for Freedom, and it was really um, exciting to me to work with people with disabilities to have a stronger voice. And I was talking to Mary Beth Vargas and Amy, who work at Vinfin, about the Vinfin's interest in really supporting self advocacy leadership. So that's how I got started working with VINFIN and working with you, Peter, and others who are interested in, in, um, in self-advocacy and becoming, uh, you know, leaders there at VINFIN. Um. And then I started with the, with the group because, you know, VINFIN saw it as a real need. We um, needed to make progress in that area. We saw it as a goal. And um, I love working with the self-advocates. It's probably the funnest part of my job. So I was excited to join. What, what issues are in point for self-advocates to advocate for? So, I, guess, so I, I think, you know, one issue that's obviously real critical now is around um, how people receive supports um, with COVID and with all the restrictions, you know, with, with COVID. And so one issue to advocate for is so people with disabilities have a strong voice in how their services, how they receive supports. Um, you know, that's a general issue that people with disabilities need to keep fighting to have a strong voice around decisions impacting their lives, like where they live, who they live with, what staff support them. But with, with COVID, it's become more, um, more acute. I think the other area I would, I would highlight is around employment. Um, there's, 
you know, been very little change in the employment rate for people with disabilities, really over the years, you know, I've been working. And I think, you know, that's another area where self-advocates need to have a stronger voice around um, job opportunities and the supports they need to um, find jobs and, um, you know, sustain those jobs. And for me, I think part of it too is to not forget about some of the little things because in day to day, like, you know, what you want to do and where you want to go and what you want to have for dinner that night. I think um, sometimes that gets lost in the shuffle at the home because uh, there's a lot of dynamics. So just to remind everyone that they have a voice in their daily life and in their bigger, you know, opportunities in their life, like Jeff said. How has COVID impacted the lives of people with disabilities? So first of all, I want to say, Peter, I hope we're going to have a chance to ask you some questions after, uh, you know, we, uh, after you, you know, asked us. But, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, I think, Peter, you, you have reflected this, that one of the biggest impacts is people being so isolated. Um, you know, people who live in, in group living, um, group homes and other group living in, you know, homes have not had opportunities to even basically go shopping or, you know, do advocate, you know, other activities in the community. Um, so that's a big area, not only for people with disabilities, but a lot of people have become more isolated and lonely. And we really need to um, do a better job, you know, um, you know, kind of impacting that. I mean, I would go with what Jeff said too. Um, you know, it's COVID has changed the way that we deliver all of our services and the way we all live our life. So um, now that we know that this is something that we're going to have to kind of live with for a long time, we really need to get um, people to advocate the way they want us to deliver those services and provide them with the support. Okay. Tell us about what happens at a self-advocacy group meeting. You want to start, Amy, and then I'll... Sure. So um, a few things happen at the meetings. One is we try, um, with COVID, things change the way the meetings occurred. Um, but we do a couple different things in the meeting. One is we always try to check in and see how everybody's doing. And then we sometimes try to work on something. Um, Prior to COVID, we were working on different human rights and talking about human rights. Um, we also um, worked on developing a bingo game, which I think we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, so that was a, a big um, undertaking for the group. Um, we've also had the group talk about different policies or procedures that VIMFIN is working on and ask them to give some of their impact. I mean, some of their feedback, sorry. Um, and then other times it's just fun. We talk to each other, we see how everyone's doing, and we also play the bingo game, which I think is a group favorite. Yeah, I, I think what's been, you know, kind of exciting for me is also how the group has come together to support each other. So if, if someone has a concern, you know, in terms of their lives, they you know, people really feel comfortable bringing it up and get support from, uh, you know, from peers and kind of discussing it. If, you know, the other thing is some, <clears throat> you know, people have brought up, you know, that they're not happy where they're living or, um, and they'd like to move. And so the self-advocacy group has created an opportunity for people to feel comfortable bringing up their concerns. And, um, you know, as an agency, VINFIN has been very responsive to that as people have brought up concerns, you know, how to address them. So it's, it's, it's not only, a, it's not only a, an opportunity for some leadership development, you know, in training, but also for people to support each other and bring up issues that they need support on and maybe um, actually get some positive movement, um, you know, from that. So people have brought up 
you know, where they were not happy where they were living and then working on um, ways to support them to make a change. So the bingo game is when, you know, everyone's there, um, everyone gets a bingo card and each bingo card has different pictures that relate to different topics around self-advocacy. Um, so once everyone gets the card, we kind of pull a card. And if um, the card we pull, for example, um, there's a few different ones, but I'm going to show you the self-advocacy card. So that would, oh, sorry, be the picture. Can you not see that? And then... Um, a little, oh, there it is. Amy. There it is. And then the questions relating to self-advocacy are on the card. And the group came up with the questions. So, um, for example, on the self-advocacy card, it says, do you know what self-advocacy is? Um, describe three words that words would you would use to describe self-advocacy. Um, do you want to be part of a group? And if not, are you part of a group? And if not, are you interested in it? Um, so, Peter, why don't we start with um, what three words would you use to describe self-advocacy? Uh, learn how to speak up for, for services and um, um, I, I advocate for, for other people with disabilities and, and um, learn how to have, have a stronger voice. Great. So we would go during the bingo game, we'd go around and we'd ask a few people to answer it and then you'd mark your card and then we'd pull another card. And so say if I pulled voting, which I know is a favorite topic of yours, Peter. So one yeah. of the questions would be, do you vote? Do you know where your voting location is and why do you think it's important to vote? So do you want to answer why do you think it's important to vote? Um, because it's a civic duty to to our country and um, to pick our leaders and pick who runs our country and state and whatnot. So, and another question would be, how can you get help getting voting information about candidates? So, how do you um, get your information when you? Vote I, I go. I go to different sign, sign holding events uh, in my hometown midfield and uh, to um, do sign holding and I get to meet the, the people running for offices and whatnot. Yeah, so you get a flavor, you know, when we met in person. We haven't tried it on, on Zoom yet, but we hope that the next meeting we'll do a little Zoom bingo. Um, but when we met in person and there were, you know, 25 or 40 people in the room, um, and as we're going through these, then people are hearing what other people say and, and a learning and a sharing and exchanging ideas. Um, and we do that after each um, card is picked. Um, so there's an opportunity to discuss, you know, the topics. What was exciting to me is it took, you know, a few meetings as we develop these questions, right? So part of, you know, the self-advocacy group is, as we said, is, is learning about self-advocacy. And just through the process of creating this, this self-advocacy bingo, um, you know, people really got, I mean, you could say what you feel, Peter, but people really got, you know, engaged and, and you know, people who at the, big, at the first meeting might've been hesitant to talk, because, you know, a lot of people are reluctant, you know, speak out in a large group. They kind of gain more skills and more confidence in, in actually giving their ideas, you know, to the whole group. And that's what made this, um, you know, the end result of creating the self-advocacy bingo game really terrific. Because it was a real group effort. Can the Vincent self-advocacy group start meeting in person? soon it's a good question peter and i still am working on an answer for that um i think we can um i'm just trying to get some details together i'm meeting with the um um admin group tomorrow um joe did say he would set aside some time so we could talk about it so um 
I'm hopeful. Joe has been pretty open to that in the past. Um, so we'll have to kind of take it day by day right now, but I think we will be able to find a space where we can social distance and kind of have some fun together. Yeah, yeah just, for, uh, just for the audience, we, you know, we had, you know, usually had between 30 and, and maybe 50 people attend, which was wonderful. Um, so one of the things we've been talking about is whether to get a, you know, a smaller group together or maybe 15 people initially and to make sure there's enough social distance and people are, are careful. Um, thankfully, I, I think most people, if not everyone, are vaccinated, um, you know, including myself. And, um, you know, so the hope is maybe we'll start with a small, a smaller group and, and see, um, you know, and see what happens. Because, you know, Peter, just like you, I really miss seeing people in person. Right. It's been, me, uh, it's me been really challenging. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the last time we had our meeting by Zoom, it was great. You know, I think, Peter, you were very active in the meeting and there was a lot of good conversations. And um, but so we want to continue to do that. But obviously meeting in person would be fabulous. Can, can the group of members um, of the groups attend the state conference? Uh. Yeah, so um, the Massachusetts Advocates Standing Strong, which is the statewide um, self-advocacy group, obviously in Massachusetts, their, um, their conference is going to be in February this year. Um, I think it's still going to be virtual, um, but... I'm, I'm looking uh, for the exact date. Um, and, um, and yes, I would say absolutely. That's one of the things we want to work on is supporting as many people who are interested to, um, you know, to attend because they have a lot of good workshops and, you know, an opportunity to, um, even though it might be through Zoom, to meet, you know, meet self-advocates from around the state. I would definitely be interested. And I will, I, one of the things that was on my to-do list was to find out the date, you know, before I saw you, Peter. So it's, um, it's February 19th and then it'll be, um, uh, I think some of the days the following week. So, you know, we'll make sure that everyone involved in the group gets the information in plenty mm -hmm. of time to, um, you know, to sign up. That'd be great. And maybe at the next meeting, um, Peter, you can encourage some of the other people to attend. I know virtual is not ideal, but maybe if they attend virtually, then next year we can all go as a group together. Yeah. If it's in person. Fingers crossed. That'd be great. Yeah. And one of the fun things we talked about um, at the group is, frankly, both at the statewide conference and if it gets back together, the, state, the national conference. Um, self-advocates becoming empowered is it'd be great for people like you Peter and and other people involved in the group to do a presentation about um, you know kind of really starting and you know and and being involved in a group like this in terms of self-advocacy leadership and um, how can we involve various politicians well, I think you're probably a better expert than we are, Peter. How would you involve <laughs> politicians? Um, I mean, for the self-advocacy Zooms, I was thinking, um, I have a friend named Denise Garlick, from, uh, who's my state rep, and uh, I was thinking maybe someday we could get the, her or some of the local politicians involved in in our group by do, join us on our Zooms or or somehow to, so they can learn about our group. So Denise Garlick is, is terrific. And actually the first time I met her is I was doing a, a presentation around how important self-advocacy was. And she happened to be in the audience. And so after after the meeting ended, you know, she and I started talking about the importance of self-advocacy, 
Um, and so I think she would love to attend. And, um, you know, I think, Peter, we should talk about, you know, the when. And I think you inviting her would be terrific. You know, she's a tremendous advocate at the State House on so many issues that impact people with disabilities. I think she would welcome attending. I think that's a wonderful idea. And I have an old tradition at my old self-advocacy program at Watch City Self-Advocates, um, where my old tradition was we would, um, we would make uh, what's called uh, care packages for the, for the U.S. Army troops or for overseas. Uh -huh. And we would have a person that would come to our self-advocacy meetings at Watch City Self-Advocates in Waltham and we would um, give the care packages to wh whoever works for them and they would send the, the care packages to, to our troops. That's great. Peter, before we ask you a couple of questions, how, do you have any other questions of us? You guys can ask me questions. So let me ask you one question. I'm just curious since this is so great that you're doing this show. So how did you get involved in, in pulling the show together? Um, with my mom's help and the T Medfield TV's help and to, I thought of you guys, so. So what do you like the most about doing these shows? I like um, in interviewing different people that care mm -hmm. about people with special needs and disabilities. This is great. You do a great job. I've seen some yeah. of the old tapes. Yeah, I was. I went and looked at some of the old tapes, and you've never shared with us that you did this show. So I was so surprised. Um, I think it would be great if you shared it with our group sometime too. Yeah, and um, I was also on Fox Twenty Five News uh, TV interview with my friend Jeff uh, Chris Chris Flanagan from Fox Twenty Five News. He he interviewed me for Positively Massachusetts uh -huh. back at the end of August. Yeah, it's great. So what would you like to do in the future with the, um, you know, VinFin self-advocacy group or maybe the statewide self-advocacy group? I would love to be able to go to the state conference, um, be able to go to the state conference and mm -hmm. meet other people and get to know the other self-advocates and, and be, make friends and make lifelong life friends. And yeah. So do you think, Peter, you might be interested in going back and being on the board of Mass Advocate Standing Strong? Um, if I was picked, yeah. Yeah. I was on the board for five and a half, five and a half years, and I did what was called a, a retreat. I did that with my mom. Um, we did a retreat as a group for the Mass Advocate Standing Strong mm -hmm. uh, Mass Board. Um, and I did um, meetings in Whitensville, Mass. Yeah. In Whitensville, where they have the, the Mass Advocate Standing Strong Mass Board uh, meetings. Yeah. yeah, I think we might have met at some point because I used to go to those meetings uh, a lot. So we should definitely talk more about that, yeah. about your interest and, in, you know, in uh, being on the board again. Now, that'd be great. Um, and what do you, what do you see as the important issues that? Uh, important issues. Um, um, employment. For people with disabilities to mm -hmm. have, uh, to have jobs. Um, uh, I'm advocating for safety in, in group homes is, is a big one. Yeah. Um, and homes in general to, um, for <coughs> people with, di for people with disabilities that want to be in homes near, near, near their families where they'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Happy is the bottom line. 
we should be doing everything we can to support people to be happy, right? Yep. Yeah. And what do you enjoy the most about being involved in self-advocacy? Being able to speak up yeah. uh, when things are not right with the group home and when things are bothering me that I could turn to you guys and for, for, for advice. That's great. That's I mean, great. we really... Well, I'll speak for myself. It's been great to get to know you better and have you having you involved in the group. And, you know, I think you've really offered a lot. And uh, certainly I learned from you as you express your feelings and what's important to you. So that's, you know, that's great. And um, I look forward to someday being able to see you guys in person again. I really hope that will be sooner rather than later. Yeah, well, once we know, once Amy finds out what's what we could do, you know, with the larger group, getting the group together, then we'll figure it out. And, um, you know, maybe, you know, kind of separate from that, then maybe we get even a small group together just to get together, you know, just, a, you know, a few of us. So we'll we'll figure that out once Amy knows what's possible. And I want to wish you and Amy a very ha happy Thanksgiving. Well, thank you. You too. Yeah, you too, Peter. And ha happy holidays. Yeah, yeah. Thank I got to try to get a turkey this week. I hear turkeys might be hard to find. <laughs> yeah, I heard that too on the news. Yeah. Other than the 50 wild turkeys that hang out in my front lawn. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Do you have plans there. for Thanksgiving, Peter? Uh, not yet. My mom has to talk to my sister. Oh, good. You'll be with your mom and your family? Yeah. That's always the, good. The, this Saturday, we're, uh, we're going to the Magic of Lights, Christmas oh. Lights display at, at Gillette Stadium in uh, Foxborough. So I'm really looking forward to that. Peter, oh, you have to tell me how that is because I'm going the following Saturday. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it, you pay by the car load, like how many people are in the, are in the car. And it, it's a very awesome display. My mom and I went last year with my dad and I, my mom and my dad and I. It was fantastic. Wow. Oh, I have to look into that because we're, we're going a week from Saturday to the lighting at Tower Hill Garden in West Boylston, I think. Wellesley? In, uh, West, in, um, I think it's in West Boylston. Wow. It's out near yeah, where I live. Far. Yeah, so that sounds great at Gillette Stadium. Yeah, it's in the it's in the driveway of uh Gillette Stadium, like they have a huge parking lot display of Christmas lights, so Oh neat. Sounds good. Way to well, get tell, the holiday spirit. Tell, tell everyone happy holidays. Well you have a great holidays too, Peter, and we'll we'll talk very soon. Yeah, uh, we'll take care. This is Thanks great. You too. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you guys for being on my show. Our Thank pleasure. Bye-bye. And stay tuned uh, for, for the next episode of Special Times with Pierre Filosa.